murderer out here? You hiding? I'm back here. Whoever that is, come on back here. All right, Daryl, I'm coming. Oh, hey, Daryl. How's it going, Junior? Hey, Ricky. Ricky Rattail. What do you want? I'm having some troubles with my mower. I can't get it started. I tried everything. Well, I work on cars and stuff, but these small engines, they're just beyond me. I am ASC certified. I can rebuild 327 small block Chevy upwards and downwards in my sleep, but I can't just figure out these little small engines. Well, what's it doing? When I crank her over, she's just barely bumping the valve. Based off of what you're telling me, sounds like it needs a new camshaft. Well, do you think that's something I can fix myself? Well, if you have to ask me if you can fix something, that tells me you can't fix it, Mr. 327 Small Block Chevy. I ain't messing with the tail. Big burn fat. I messed with the tail last time, and I didn't fail. Remember this? Well, you might have gotten the best of the tail last time, but this tail staying with Ricky till the death do we part. Pterodactyl here, and I'm going to show you how to replace a camshaft in one of these Riggs and Scranton engines. Well, first we're going to look so you know that it does need a camshaft. So watch the valves. Look at that one. Barely opening and closing. Compression releases work. Look at how, look at how much that one's going down, up and down. This one should do the same thing. Look, barely moving. That lobe on the camshaft is wore off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this motor off. Make sure you drain all the oil out of it. Then we're going to take it over on the bench and I'm going to pull the sump cover off. We're going to order us up a new cam and a new gasket. Okay, I got the motor off, but this pulley is rusted on the crankshaft. I have another video where I show you how to remove rusted parts. And I'm going to show you how to remove this rusted pulley without ruining it. Now I was able to take this engine off and leave the pulley on, I just had to loosen up the belt. So what you're going to need is a 7 16 fine thread bolt or you can use the bolt that held the, the clutch on. I got one already with a divot in it and you're going to need an air hammer with a point on it and you're going to need an oxygen and an amphetamine torch. And I'm going to show you how to remove this pulley without ruining it because this pulley is about $35 and I see it all the time where people try getting them off and they bend it all up. Then they got to cut it off and then you, I'm going to show you how to get it off without ruining it and then we're going to take that camshaft out. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is get this pulley heated up cherry red inside and out. I took the spark plug out, so it makes it easy to turn the motor over so I can spin it with one hand while I'm heating it up. It takes about five minutes to get this cherry red, this pulley. And then either have a garden hose handy, or in my case, I got Junior here with the hose, and he's going to quench this thing. And what that's going to do, it's going to turn that rust to powder. And then this pulley's going to come right off. And then we won't, we didn't have to ruin it. So it's about ready. Oh yeah. All right, Junior, hit it. Be careful. Make sure you ain't got no gas in that motor or any flammables. You don't want the gas leaking out and starting a fire, so be careful. Safety first. Now I'm going to get the... Get it nice and cool so I don't burn myself. Um, Man, this thing is steaming, Paul. Yeah. Hey, it's hot. Get it on the inside there, Junior. Get on the inside. That's the I'll outside. I've been spraying in there. 
In and out, all around, up and down. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's nice and cool. So I already got that divot in this bolt so this don't slip off with the air hammer. There you go, there's your dinner. Now I'm going to clean up that shaft and everything and we're going to pull it apart and pull that bad camshaft out. Alright, we got that pulley off and look, it ain't damaged. We didn't dent it up or nothing. And I know I get people all the time contacting me through YouTube saying, well, you heated that up cherry red and you quenched it and you changed the property and you hardened that, that pulley now by doing that. It's a lawnmower. We're not flying to the moon on the space shuttle. I probably actually made this part better. I probably hardened it now. It's just a pulley. Another thing I see on these engines all the time you might want to check since you got it off is this quick drain thing is always loose. Look at that. I didn't loosen that ahead of time. That's how it was. These things are always loose and always leaking. So check that. You might want to tighten it up, take it out, put some Teflon tape, some pipe dope, tighten it up. So, first thing you want to do when you're pulling this apart is pull all them bolts out and we'll pull the cover off. Okay, I got all the bolts removed, and I noticed that all the bolts are the same length on this cover. Now, some engines, not this one, but some other ones might use different length bolts, and if they do, make sure you mark where that longer or shorter bolt goes. So, make a note of that. All the bolts are out, so now I'm just going to tap on this ear and take this cover off. You're going to want to clean all that gasket off, maybe clean this cover out before you go to put it back on. Here's your governor. There's the governor gear and that rides right on there. So make sure when you put this back together it lands in that same spot. See the way the cover is when you go to put the cover back on? It's got this little pocket here and that's what's going to keep this from moving. So as you put this on, this is going to stay in that position. So make sure you get that. And another thing, rotate the crankshaft until the timing marks line up and then the camshaft will come right out. Right there, lined up. It's always good to have a spark plug out and drain the oil out. Make sure you drain the oil out. Cam comes out. And looky here. Look. Look at that. It's all rounded off. Gone. See how nice and pointy that one is? This one rounded off. Now here's that compression release I was talking about. When the motor cranks hard. So see how that sticks up a little bit? See this is spring loaded. It's got a flat spot on it. So as this thing rotates around, that little rod bumps that exhaust valve and that's what relieves the compression. So if you got sloppy valves, it ain't gonna, it's just gonna run right over that and it ain't gonna bump it. And then when the motor starts, centrifugal force flings this out of the way. See, now it's flat, so it don't bump it when it's going around. Then when the motor shuts off, that spring returns it, so it bumps it. So there's a little lesson on how that compression release works on this cam. And now another thing, if it's got an oil pump, these motors, it's gonna have that slot. And that slot is for the for the drive for the oil pump. See? This is where the cam fits. Now if you got a motor that doesn't have an oil filter on it, it's not going to have an oil pump and it's not going to have that slot. So say you got some junk engines laying around, you're like, oh I'll just rob a cam out of that other Briggs motor I got. Well, you better make sure that motor's got a oil filter and an oil pump because if it don't cams are exactly the same except for that notch so keep that in mind in case you're swapping parts with used parts and then make sure that compression release is there and it's working okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this gasket and everything 
And then we're gonna order some parts. Oh yeah, one other thing. I probably ruined this seal when I heated it up with the torch. So I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm gonna go ahead and order a new seal, a new gasket, and a new camshaft. Junior, I need you to order parts for this engine. You want me to order them off Pro Parts Direct? Well, yeah, ProPartsDirect.net. ProPartsDirect.net. What do you need, Pa? Give me a camshaft, a sump gasket, a PTO seal, and oh yeah, a valve cover gasket. There, done. That was easy. Oh wow. Wow, that was quick, Pa. Already here. Oh wow, yeah, that was quick. Here you go, Pa. Oh man, that was fast. Thanks, Junior. Okay, I'm gonna pop this seal out. Now, take notice of about how deep that seal is in there. Because you don't want to drive it in too deep, you block off that oil hole. And you can see it's just a little bit below the surface. So I'm just gonna take a big screwdriver and pop that out. See how easy that came out? And I'm gonna clean that up. So there's that oil hole. If you drive that seal down too deep, you'll block off that hole, it won't get no oil. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the seal in now, it's gonna be easier. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to get prepared after you got all the gasket and everything scraped off, is this is the cover for the oil pump. Now there's an O-ring in there, so you don't need to replace that, you can just use it over. And this is the pump, see how that spins around? So we're gonna take this out, so it's gonna make it easier when we go to put this back together. And the shaft, there's the shaft, the pump shaft. Now you notice it's only gonna go in one way because this has got a tiny notch on it and this other side's got a bigger notch. So it's only gonna go in one way. I'll take this out too. So we'll just leave them and you can clean them parts up if you want. And then when you go to reinstall this cover, some people like to put the seal on after they put this on, but then the crankshaft's sticking up, and if you ain't got a tool to drive that seal in, then you're going to have trouble. So I'm going to just put the seal in ahead of time. Lightly tap it. Try to tap it on the edge. And then I want to drive it down a little bit deeper. I'm going to try to find a socket or something that'll fit on there. If not, you could use a small punch and just lightly go around and drive that down a little bit. I love when they bring parts, when the delivery man brings parts. It's like Christmas every day here. You get to open boxes. It's like opening presents. All right, here comes the new cam. They got it wrapped in some protective paper. And it comes with a new set of lifters. So when you put these new lefters in, you're going to have to double check your clearance. Because if these are war, you know, you might have a different clearance on it. You should check it anyway, 4,000. And then here's a new camshaft. And you can see the lobes ain't all wore down. Now, you can put some assembly lube on here. If you have it, or some heavy oil, some heavy straight weight oil, but you're gonna wanna lube this up. You're gonna wanna lube these up. Now I just so happen to have, from when I uh, do the lifters on a crawler engine, they give you this little tube of Thixotropic camshaft lube. So I'm gonna use that. I got a lot of tubes of this, or maybe you can find this somewhere at the auto parts store. But that's what you should use on there when you're putting a new cam in. And then you're going to want to lube up this because that's going to fit in there and you're going to want to lube up this. So I'm going to go ahead and lube all that up and then we're going to reinstall it. Oh! Telephone's ringing. That's a customer. Alright, smooth that that grease on there, that thick old tropic, whatever that means. This stuff smells horrible. And I'm gonna lube all this up. And I put the new uh, tappets in. And then now all you have to do is line up your mark, your two marks, one on the cam, 
and the one on the crankshaft so your cam timing's right. Next, you're going to put this on. This acts as two things. See how it's got them wings on there? That kind of helps splash the oil around in there too. And it's your governor. There's the weights for the governor. That's how that works. So make sure this didn't come apart on you. It should look like that. Stick that back on and stick that point on that arm. Now we're ready to put the gasket on and I'm going to show you how to put the cover on. Oh, another thing. Make sure, you know, because that little bit is sticking out, make sure there's no boogers on there. And if there is, clean it off with some real super fine sandpaper get it clean. So the cover will go on easier. Now I'm going to open up the gasket and lay that in place. Alright, I, I reinstalled that seal. You can see I dropped it down a little bit like it was before. Remember I told you, take note of that. And then I'm going to take a little motor oil and I'm going to lube that up. And I also poured a little oil on here. And then you got to lube up this journal on the crankshaft too. You can pour a little bit of oil on there, ain't going to hurt nothing. Lube that up too. And there's the gaskets in place. And I cleaned the cover on the inside. I cleaned it up. Got all them boogers out. So, put the cover on. Now be careful not to roll that edge of the seal when you're putting it on. Now, grab a pair of channel locks or vice grips. And what you're going to want to do is just Rotate the crankshaft a little bit to get all them gears to mesh and that cover will drop down. See? You just got to roll a little bit. Don't fight it. Let it drop down. I see people where they put the bolts in here and they want to draw the cover down. You shouldn't do that. You're going to wreck something. Just give it a wiggle. Keep the plug out, spark plug, so you're not fighting against any kind of compression. And the reason we took the oil pump out is because you would never be able to line this back up. Now you can. Now you can drop this shaft in there and turn it till it drops into that slot on the cam. Now you can take your gear, oil pump gear, you can slide that in. Now you can take the other one and put this in. Now it don't matter which way this goes. It can go this way or that way. It's just a pump. It pumps when it goes around. This is what does the pumping the little points of the star. So turn it until you get everything to line up. Come on. Come on Mr. Oil Pump. There we go. And then since they're using an O-ring, pop the O-ring back in there. Wipe this off. Got a little oil on it. Ain't gonna hurt that O-ring have a little oil on it. Yeah, you can see where it was wearing. And put your screws back in. Now we're going to put these screws in, and then you're going to tighten them gradually in a cross pattern. I'm sure there's a specific pattern for tightening it, but I just tighten it a little bit at a time across from each other. You can go on Briggs' website. You can probably find the torque specs if you want to torque it to specific specs. You can put a little Loctite on them. See, they had some kind of thread locker on, on these bolts from the factory. So if you want, I would recommend blue. Because blue is removable. Red, that's tough. I don't know if you want to use red. I'd use blue. Okay, I'm going to explain something here because I've had people hit me up on YouTube on my valve adjusting video. And I try to explain to them why I do it the way I do. Where I don't go both valves close that top dead center. I always do it like this, Mr. Cameraman Show, where I turn it and this one's open and this one's closed and I set it. Then this one's open and this one's closed and I set it. And the reason I do that is look, look at this camshaft. When the valve is fully open, it's on this low here. So that means that other tap it is down here. So it's not rubbing on anything. It's no different than putting it at top dead center, both valves closed. All I'm doing is I got one open, the other one's closed. 
because it ain't on that lobe. I hope that makes sense to you, but that's how I do it. Instead of trying to figure out if it's at top dead center and both valves are closed, just rotate it. One valve's open, the other one ain't gonna have no drag on it. You can set it. Same thing, that's how it works. Okay, motor's all back together, cover's all tight and everything. Now, you wanna get this pulley off next time in case you gotta change the belt or something. Put never seize on this shaft. That's what they should have did at the factory. So I'm gonna never sleeze this shaft all up before I go put this pulley on. But I'm gonna put the pulley on after I got the engine on the motor. I think it'll be easier. Okay, got the motor back in, got everything all hooked up. Test ran it and ran fine. This thing's all ready to put Ricky back on it. Remember this? Got me another one. That's number two. And there's your dinner.